Hello again, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of really new bourbons, one of which is going to be more available than the other. Uh, but the reason I wanted to showcase these two together was because we're going to see what a young bourbon is like when you rely on a double oak maturation to kind of help give it a lot of depth, a lot of oak profile, a lot faster. And then on the other end is just that old bean bourbon that has just been sitting in barrels for 17 years. And we're going to see how that tastes compared. Now, the one thing I'll say, we'll start talking about the Chicken Cock Double Oak 8-year first. Uh, beautiful bottle. Custom bottle. This is embossed all the way around. It's an old prohibition style flask bottle. And it even comes with those old kind of pork caps that they used to have corked on top that is a very solid cap if you squeeze it you're not going to collapse it easily so i like that about it 100 dollars price point bottled at 92 proof uh, the one thing uh, they talked about was that it takes great oak to make a great whiskey so they're trying to showcase um, again that double oak presence and it talks about on the back how they took a 17 a seven year old bourbon dumped it into a brand new charred oak American barrel from West Virginia, where it spent an additional year of maturation, hence the eight-year age statement, on the label. And then they were able to proof it down to 92 and bottle it for $100. So we're going to see what that tastes like first. Then we're going to follow that up with Hardens Creek latest release, the Claremont edition. Now, the Claremont, uh, I don't even own a bottle of this. What you're seeing is just an imposed image. Uh, but I have a sample of it, and the way I was able to get this sample was a good friend of mine here, local to North Texas, was able to get a bottle from a good friend of hers in Kentucky. Sent her the bottle. First thing she does is crack it and starts sharing it with everybody. I want to say the bottle has been open for like two weeks, maybe two weeks now, and it is halfway gone. So she does a lot of sharing as we all do in the whiskey community so i'm very thankful for her for allowing me to review this sample for you because when this comes to your state even though it's already launched in kentucky a lot of other states are still waiting so when it comes out you're going to know about it and hopefully by the time you watch this video you can get out there and get them because again you more than likely you'll be able to see them at least online so hopefully they'll ship to your state see how that goes now hardens creek claremont the very first one to roll out 110 proof retail price at about 175 of course i expect sec you know kind of see that bump up on the retail shelves to probably closer to like 200 to 300 somewhere in there is where i'm expecting now the one thing i'll say is that if you watch my channel and you saw my liquor hounds best uh, spirits of 2022 you will have seen that i named hardens creek jacobs well my bourbon of the year last year now, that was a blend of 15 and 16-year-old beams that I found phenomenal. I really love that bourbon. I did not expect them to follow it up with an older bourbon. I thought we were going to come back down to earth. We're going to be about, you know, back to a 12, a 13-year-old bourbon if we were lucky. No. They announced three 17-year-old bottlings coming out this year, starting with the Claremont, going on to one called the Boston, and the other one for the Frankfurt. And what these are are different, you know, I guess, aging distillery locations where they're aging up the exact same mash bill for the exact same 17 years and trying to showcase the Kentucky terroir of, so you can just have all three bottles, taste them side by side and be like, wow, you can definitely taste the difference just based on location. So that's the reason they're doing this. Again, 110 proof, retail price 175 for this 17-year-old Claremont. But let's go ahead and start with chicken cock double oak eight year old i will say the color on it is very nice that double oak maturation has lent some pretty good impact there because it is not a ton lighter than that 17 year but on the nose really nice and sweet on the nose you get this big caramel little little bit of brown sugar in there lots of baked apples baked cherries and a little bit of plums in there as well nice and caramelized fruit some nuttiness in here a little peanut but it's not out of hand it's not heavy-handed it's just a little bit of peanut, like those little crushed peanuts in there 
maybe a little almond, a little pecan. Pretty good amount of oak. Doesn't smell really new. You know, sometimes you'll get on a young whiskey, you'll smell that really new oak characteristic. No, this one just smells like really nice oak. Good amount of citrus in here. There's a good orange zest spritz in here. Some leather. A little dark chocolate. And again, the cinnamon, the baking spices are definitely in there, but at 92 proof, they're not out of hand. Okay, let's go to the taste. Medium, just over, just touch over medium viscosity, so that's nice. Really nice flavor profile as far as drinkability. This one is, that's the one thing I'm noticing on the first sip was I'm checking viscosity, I'm checking the sweetness transition, but I'm also checking how it's, what's the overall, just the overall impression. And to me, that feels like a really nice little sipper. That caramel hits, a little brown sugar in, in with that. All those baked fruits that I mentioned, the cherries, the plums, um, that baked apple are in there right away. There's a little bit of a almost like a granola characteristic, almost granola covered with some honey in here. That orange zest is definitely in it, as are that those kind of roasted nuts, that pecan, uh, the peanut almond, big, big oak laying underneath everything, but it's not covering up anything. It's just big, heavy base. I will say there is a touch of... There's a touch of bitterness, but it's so well uh, integrated that it feels like you can, you almost attribute it right away to there's a little bit of walnut characteristic to that nuttiness that's in there. You don't pick it up as a bitter oak. Once you get past that, on that mid palate, you get that baking spice kind of rise up. It's only 92 proof, so it quickly starts to roll over the backside. Big leather coming in. The fruits are still just pushing through. Dark chocolate shavings. Leather and oak just for days on the back end. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that. That is a really nice bourbon. It's... You know, some things I like about older bourbons are not present here. You get a really big, impactful oak, but you're not getting that really heavy orange oil, that real heavy clove that I typically like. But you do get that orange zest. So you are getting some characteristics that from that heavy double barrel um, impact. So some really nice things done there, and I'm not disappointed at all at $100 for that double oak version. All right, now we're going to move on to Hardin's Creek. Claremont edition. Okay, here we go. 17 year old, 110. Retail pricing, 175. Again, more than likely 200, $300 price point. On the nose. Yeah, that's, that's weighty. Lots of oat, lots of brown sugar, a little bit of molasses. Yeah, little molasses, brown sugar, tons of old leather. There's a little clove and anise in this one. Or anise, however you like to say that. There's some, yeah, there's almost like a rumminess character to it. Because there's some, that molasses, that dense plum that's in here. Brandy cherries. Old leather. Mm. That little bit of that orange oil. That Because this one was like fresh. It was like a, you know, a spritz of orange zest. This one's like old, like orange oil. And what I mean by that is in old bourbons, old rye specifically, that freshness of the zest, when it actually starts integrating into an old whiskey, you pick it up as almost like a orange, 
furniture polish type situation. It's not it doesn't come off like fresh right right in your nose. It's not like that, and that's what this one has. I will say it's not super complex on the nose. It's just heavy oak leather. Again, that kind of orange oil, plum, molasses, brandied cherry. Again, dark cocoa shavings. Alright, here we go. Let's taste it. Mm. Nice. Really nice. 110, it drinks like a hundred proof whiskey. Enters heavy brown sugar. And initially, when you first taste it, you get that brown sugar. And then a few seconds later, here comes that molasses. Boom, hitting right behind that. Brandied cherries, almost like a brandied plum in there as well. It starts getting into rich, rich cocoa. Heavy old leather, tobacco. Mm. Starting at the beginning, brown sugar, brandy cherries, brandy plums, that's right there. A little bit of a nuttiness hitting right there in the before you get to that mid palate. It's almost like a little bit of that one's gonna be like a little bit of pecan. Baked pecan. Everything feels very baked in this old one. A little bit of walnut in there as well. And then you get that baking spice kind of hit on the mid palate, but that one is more of that heavy clove. Heavy clove, a little bit of anise, a little cinnamon, big swell on it. And then all of a sudden you just start getting pounded with just this dark chocolate. Just tons of dark chocolate falling on top. Old leather. That orange oil kind of lingering in and about. I'm going to nose this one one more time. This is that new young one. Yeah. This one. The, the years just make a difference. It's almost like an old cola syrup as well. And again, that tobacco. Tobacco shows up on the very back end of it. There is a little bit of like a... Sometimes with really old bourbons, you'll get almost a real slight mustiness to it. You'll get like a... Sometimes I like to describe it in the brandy world like a dank cellar. Like a moist, dank cellar. This has a little bit of that characteristic in it. It doesn't quite go to like the... Whereas the old, the old, old bourbons would get like this real machine oil, garage, toolbox type. It's almost a chemical thing. Uh, flavor profile to them. And they call those real dusty tasting bourbons. This one has a, a twinge of it. But it, it mostly stays a little bit more on that kind of damp cellar. Almost slightly earthy characteristic to it. But that cocoa, that cola, that old leather, that orange oil clove thing, that light pecan, roasted pecan, those are fantastic notes. And this thing does run a very long time on the palate. I think it's a little less sweet than last year's Jacob's Well version. Um, and I think there's a little, there's definitely, you know, it is older, but there is a bigger oak influence. So I thought last year's was just perfectly balanced. This one, hence, it's a little heavier on the oak. It's not so lopsided that it's going to cause a lot of problems for you on the palate. But you better be ready. There's a, there's a good amount of it. But the payoff is just all those other flavors, those big nuanced flavors that you don't find in Younger Bourbons are there. So I really like the Claremont Edition. Uh, I did speak with the Beam National, uh, or the National Brand Ambassador. And she was telling me, that she got to taste the other two. And the Boston was the one that she felt uh, was a little too, the way she described it was, it was a little too dusty of a profile for her. Now, when I heard that, I'm like, well, that's the one I want to try. So 
as good as this one is, there's a good possibility that the Boston or the Frankfurt could be even better. So if I see this on the shelf at $175, $200, I'm picking it up. If I see the others, I'm probably doing the same thing. I think these are well-crafted bourbons coming out of beam. Um, you know, there's some other big distilleries that seem to be slipping a little bit, kind of taking advantage of their, uh, their reputation, and they're not doing it. Beam's actually kind of coming on strong, and I think they're doing a really uh, great job. Hope they keep it up. But I hope you enjoyed this video review. Uh, if you did and you like this kind of content, please join me over at patreon.com slash liquorhound because I do self-fund these bottles. And, you know, that's how I keep this channel going. It was always held to there to try to help you, the viewer, make uh, educated buying decisions. And so if you can join us over there, I'd greatly appreciate it. Of course, you're going to get all the videos ad-free. You're going to get a complete private library that's only on Patreon. And so hopefully you can join us over there. But if not, if you just can join us here on YouTube, I've always appreciated every one of my viewers, regardless of platform. So thank you for being here. Everyone have a great day and cheers.